can you name any games or activities that would be, you know, like where the player is blindfolded? Do you ever use a blindfold in a game? Yeah, pin the tail on the donkey. That's a good one. Uh, maybe somebody's done it with hide and seek before even. Mm -hmm. You know, just do something to kind of hide the person's eyes and then see if they can find you or do something like that. Or they cover their eyes their for a little eyes. while. And, sure. Yeah, they do something like that. Kind yeah. of bring back the memories of being a kid in childhood, right? Right. But you see kids do it still even nowadays. You can see them sometimes playing games where somebody's it, right? Mm -hmm. And the person who's it is usually the one who has to figure out everything that's going on, right? Right. Nobody ever wants to be the one who's it, right? <laughs> I think that still happens today in life, too. Wouldn't you agree? Definitely. Because it feels like we're it in so many things where we have to do our own jobs or our own things in life. And what happens? A lot of times you end up failing or feeling like you just can't get where you need to get. Or it'll drive you crazy sometimes where other people aren't doing what they're supposed to even do when they are actually in the position of being it. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm talking too much. Let me tell you who I am. I'm Truth Inspires founder, and I'm here to tell you we're going to do a little bit of Bible study here because I want to know if you've ever been it. And I'm more concerned with if you ever know what it's like when you are it because you are every day. Right. You see, God has chosen each and every one of us to do his will. Mm -hmm. And you say, no, not me. That's not for me. But guess what? Sorry. Tag. You're it. That's right. So I'm going to tell you right now, there's a lot of games out there. We're talking about the blindfold, hide and seek. That was a good one. Uh, Marco Polo is one. We talked about that before. But basically any game where a person's chosen and then they have to try to figure out where everyone is or have to do something after being blindfolded can really confuse a person that is it. Mm -hmm. Life is definitely that way. In fact, what we're looking at today is the fact that we struggle in life to sometimes know where we are and if we're not careful, we'll miss God's will for us. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to tell you something. No matter what happens, no matter how you feel like you're not succeeding or whatever's going on, you can always go to God in prayer. That's right. And he will help you because sometimes seeking God's will can feel like playing one of these games, a spiritual game, if you will, of one of the games we were just talking about. Mm -hmm. Because you'll call out for help and you'll feel like you're getting a big zero from God. Mm-hmm. No, you've never felt that way, have you? I tell you, it happens on a regular basis. Almost weekly in my life, there's something or some time where I go, God, what are you doing? And instantly I want to blame God. It's an instinct. You say, God, what are you doing? Well, God knows what he's doing. The question is, what am I doing? And is there something I could be doing differently? Um, and it's funny how quick we go to blame God when we don't know what's going on instead of going to God to ask him to help us. This is so true, but let me, you know, when we're looking at this today, especially, you know, think about when you do call out, hoping that, you know, as you get in a zero, because you don't hear God's voice a lot, of, you just don't hear him talk to you and answer and respond back. Mm -hmm. But if you just be patient, you'll find out that he does seem to reach out. Um. We're going to see that as you look at these verses today. Joseph likely wondered what God was doing, but God was still at work getting ready for something Joseph never could have even imagined. And he's probably doing that with us as he molds us, makes us, and shapes us. You've heard me talk about it many times. Give it fully to God because he will reveal his plan as we go. In fact, if you go back to one we discussed, one of the verses I pull up a lot is in Jeremiah. And as you know, in Jeremiah, somebody else can read it today if they want to. 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a future. There you go. Give you a future. You know, it's not my plans. It's his, his plans. plans. And this is happening as we're going to see this today. As we talk about Genesis 41, you know, especially 14 through 16, we're going to have somebody read that in just one second. But before we do that, I kind of want you to listen while that's being read and consider the request that Pharaoh, you know, is what's happening and the response that you get from Joseph. OK, you're going to see that God had been with Joseph through all the difficult times and even was preparing him for this very moment as he may be you. And a lot of times we're very selfish. I don't want to call anybody that or anything, and I'm not going to judge or anything, but I'm going to say many times when we ask God and he doesn't seem to be answering us, 
because we want to jump to that verse, Matthew 7, 7, where you're asking and you'll receive, yeah. seeking, you'll find. Knocking, the door will be open. But that's just it. The door will be open. It doesn't tell you when, where, or how the door is going to be open. I can tell you right now it's by God and it's by his will. Mm -hmm. We have to be patient. And eventually, if you give it all to God, regardless of what you think is right or wrong, trust in God. He will reveal his plan to you. He in will always time. be right. And in his time, you'll Absolutely. see it. He will reveal it to you. It will always be better than if you take on something by yourself. Guess what's going to happen? You might fall apart. You're just not going to do it. Yeah. You might think you're yeah. doing well. And I can assure you the devil can get in there and you're going to find out it was just the opposite of well. <laughs> and it certainly wasn't swell. <laughs> you see so we got to watch things like this and this is a good section for you to be looking for those as we get somebody to go ahead and read and then we'll pray after we read today so let's go ahead and read the verses and it's genesis 41 14 through 16 immediately by the king's authority joseph was led out of prison and they shaved him and changing his apparel they presented him to him and he said to him i have seen dreams and there is no one who can unfold them I have heard that you are very wise at interpreting these. Joseph responded, Apart from me, God will respond favorably to Pharaoh. Therefore, Pharaoh explained what he had seen. Okay, so Joseph never forgot God was the one who was kind of putting or orchestrating his events in this whole life thing, did he? Mm -hmm. Are you doing that? What's happening? Do you know what's going on in your life and how you stand with God and why things, a lot of times when things aren't being answered, there might be sin even in the way. Are you mm -hmm. doing something you're not supposed to? Are you being selfish? Are you asking for something just because you want it? Are you not humbly coming before the Lord? There's so many lists of things why things aren't done, but I can tell you one thing. When we're looking at this, I like the way you see Joseph confessed that God was the only one who could interpret dreams. You see, mm -hmm. so he's not giving credit to himself or anybody else. He's humbly letting everybody know this where is the gift that God gave me. You and got I have it. to use it to glorify him. Giving credit where credit's due. Right. Are you giving credit where it's due? I'm telling you, if it's not for God, we would have, well, we'd have nothing without God. So we need to make sure we're giving him credit for everything, including our gifts and being able to do things like in this case, he was the one, it was God allowing the interpretation of dreams. And, you know, actually looking at this, we also see the second time that Joseph was rescued from a pit or dungeon. And it just shows you even more that God could use him and was going to use him to carry out, yeah, God's plans. He had plans for Joseph and he was going to use him to continue to carry out those plans. He has plans for you. You just got to give your life to him and let it be. No, I'm not telling you go be in ministry or go do something for God necessarily just because you're wanting to prove yourself to him or do something. What I'm telling you is if we, we wouldn't have anything without God and to trust him even in times of trouble because he will reveal what his plan is in your life as you go through time, as long as you put your faith in him. So you know what, guys, let's go ahead and say a quick prayer here, because I think prayer is really important. You know, that's the way that we talk to our Lord and we do it in Jesus name. So let's go ahead and we'll say an our father and then we'll go from there. Our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Father in heaven, I thank you for all your many blessings. I'm asking you right now to look down upon us and bless us. I thank you for everything including Soxty Baptist and them helping us with getting us this information and these books to help us study and do what needs to be done. Pastor Micah, thank you for all his help and all the people out there, anywhere out there that's praying with us, our followers and all the people out there. God bless those who are sick. Let them know you're with them. Help them, heal them, be with them and let them have the strength they need. Your will being done. Unsaved people coming to you, the lost souls being found. We're giving them to you, God. We're praying because we know that your will will be done. As we're praying today, we come back and ask and make sure that you're with us and just want you to know that we're asking for your help, you to let us know and see possibly you reveal your plans where we draw close enough to you that you're showing us that any struggle we go through, as long as we put our trust totally in you, Jesus, we know and trust that we can indeed call upon you and you will give us the answers and reveal what needs to be done as time goes on. 
Your answers are there as you walk through anything with us. You're there and we give it to you, Lord, always as we trust you, always and forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now that's going to bring us right back to the gains that we were talking about. Um, you see, if somebody was to cover their eyes, think about how difficult it is for them to find, well, whatever they're looking for. Mm -hmm. It's what makes the game a game, so to speak, right? Mm -hmm. But where the game would have a blindfold and it stops you from traveling around because you don't, you almost, you have to have assistance or you would hit or knock things over, right? Right. The same thing is the way we struggle through things, especially as we're looking to see what God's plans are. If we don't give ourselves totally by trust in God, we're going to be stumbling all over the place. Mm -hmm. We just have to trust that, and then he'll reveal the way. You know, I mean, that's just how right. it works. Um, Joseph was called upon to pr interpret these dreams. He was quick to admit his own limitation. And what did he do immediately? We see what we were talking about. He gave full credit to God. Are you giving full credit in everything in life to God? It's, it's so important. Go to him in prayer, ask him for help. He's listening. He already has the answer to your problem before it ever even happens. I mean, that's just how it works. I can think back on things that I thought was going one way in life, and if I had a went that one way, I would have had a disaster on my hands. But the Lord knew what was best, and oftentimes it went a different way that led me somewhere else that turned out really swell or may have had problems along the way no doubt we're not mm -hmm. got heaven on earth but i'm going to tell you right now it always almost every single time if you sit down especially when the trouble's over and look back you'll see that god was with you mm -hmm. you'll see he knew best and if you try to take it on your own you just get into more trouble and the devil can attack even better and you'll also see that oftentimes you might not get what you were needing to get out of the situation you may very well end up in a worse situation if you have not given it all to God. And you probably will just flat out not succeed if you don't some way, somehow accept God's will. Because it's all about God. In fact, the Lord's Prayer, you're going to find that that we prayed. I deliberately wanted you guys to hear me pray that prayer because what do you do? Who do we trust and what do we pray in that prayer? You give it all to God. Right. Whose will be done? Right. God's will. You don't say. I will. Yeah. By being God. You got it. And mm -hmm. of course, this being the model prayer, because it's our Lord Jesus as he prays in the garden. And it's trying to actually, he's more than once, you've heard these prayers where he prays. And what does he do? He doesn't say, even though he is Jesus and he could call upon angels if he wanted to, he did everything as a model for us to use him as that example. Absolutely. He said, my father right. in heaven right. he gives the credit to god the father and he accepts not his will but god's will the father and we need to be doing the same thing mm -hmm. and trust me in doing so guess what happens after you pray these prayers and you just might sometimes have to be patient because it doesn't always happen right away but it will be revealed over time and we're seeing that as this goes on in fact if we jump over now real quick to genesis 41 17 through 21 somebody read that for me i thought myself to be standing on the bank of a river and seven cows climbed up out of the river exceedingly beautiful and full of flesh and they grazed in a pasture of marshy green and behold there followed after these another seven cows with such deformity and emaciation as I had never seen in the land of Egypt. These devoured and consumed the first, giving no indication of being full. But they remained in the same state of emaciation and squalor. All right, you can kind of see the details in Pharaoh's dream here. Um, kind of note some of those. I tell you this quite a bit right there. Mm -hmm. But as you're looking at that, you kind of have to see that it makes you kind of find the phrases that stick out to you. If you start talking about that, maybe there's one of the phrases he says that actually you can relate to or that you're like, oh, wow, that's quite something. Um, but one thing that I get out of this is we're looking at it. It just leads us right on to the next set of verses to summarize what he just pretty much was talking about. Read 41, 22 through 32. Awakening, but being weighed down into sleep again, I saw a dream. 
Seven ears of grain sprang up on one stalk, full and very beautiful. Likewise another seven, thin and struck with blight, rose up from the stalk. And they devoured the beauty of the first. I explained this dream to the interpreters, and there is no one who can unfold it. Okay, so you can kind of see how, like I said, those, those verses really do connect well, because as you see what's happening, Pharaoh's dream is indeed explained, and you're noticing Joseph recognizing God was giving Pharaoh a look into the future. Mm -hmm. um, you're seeing that the whole act of grace is happening in the sense that the plans were being made to limit the impact of what the famine was going to be. Right, almost like a warning. This is what's going to happen, so you need to do something to prepare for that. So, you know, this is a good way for God to reveal the future to Pharaoh. And if you look at that and kind of dive in a little more, you start seeing that the plans pretty much are revealed of the future here. Mm -hmm. That's pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's amazing if somebody tells me the future, wouldn't you? Yeah. And pretty much in this case, you definitely have that happening. Um, with God's help, Joseph interpreted Pharaoh's dream. And it was just up from there as Pharaoh was deciding what to do. It really was up to him. Just like it's up to you. Are you going to listen to God and let his plan be revealed to you in your life? Or are you going to take it on by yourself thinking you can just do whatever? Well, all I can say about that is God help you. And unfortunately, there's a lot of people who do that. There's a lot of people who just don't want to go God's direction. Well, I'm going to tell you something. Some way, sooner or later, hard in heart or not, you're going to encounter God. He's going to give everyone the opportunity they need to to hear the gospel, to do what needs to be done, and to see even have chances to flip their lives over. The opportunities are always there, and the Lord is always there to work with us. He never leaves your side even when you leave his. It's a wonderful thing because no matter what you've done in life, we've said this many times in previous lessons, no matter what sin it is, it's never too great for our Father to forgive through Jesus Christ. But you don't want to wait saying, well, I'll put it off till tomorrow because tomorrow might not ever come. Mm -hmm. You see, you need to be ready and you need to give your life to God as soon as possible if you haven't already done that. And we do that, of course, in Jesus' name, knowing what he did on that cross for our sins, believing in him. John 3, 16, as we always quote, you know, so that we can get to that everlasting life. What do you have to do? You have to believe in God and give it to him. Not just God, but you have to believe in what happened on that cross. Yeah. yeah. You have to believe that he rose again after being crucified on the third day. And, and that he did that sins. all those years ago for us even today. Mm -hmm. Now, Jesus was completely innocent. And yet, what did he do? He did it for us. You're a sinner. We're all sinners. Go to him, trust him, and I guarantee you he will reveal the plan. His plan is for you to be saved. It has been all the way back since Genesis, mm -hmm. and it still is today. Right. We have to trust in him, though. That's a very important thing to know. With God's help, Joseph um, interprets the dream, and like I said, now it's up to Pharaoh what he decided to do. But as you can see, it's really God orchestrating everything in motion so that the plans would take place to give, well, he takes even those leaders that are in power and he can twist things around and do things in such a way to achieve, well, guess whose purpose gets truly achieved in the ultimate ending. Right. Now yes. I bring that up on purpose because as we're getting ready to kind of close this out, I want you to remember to pray for our leaders in this country. Because even people who don't believe in God will admit, we're in a mess right now. Mm -hmm. Everything's confusing. It's, it's not perfect. And if someone says they're living in a peachy perfect world, they're either saved and have given their life completely to God to where they're just trusting that every day is a trial and they know where they're going, so they're happy and the fruit of spirit is actually showing in them. Or they're just delusional because the world is a mess. Agree? Definitely. Make sure you're praying, and that's my challenge this week, for this country and that God be with us all and with them. That, guess what? Not my will, Lord, not my will, Lord but thine Fine. will be done. Your will, God, be done. And that includes in our country. Mm -hmm. And we need to keep that in mind as we pray for the leaders and we take one day on time, not by ourselves, but with the Lord's help. Guess what? His plan will be revealed. 
he's already revealed it to us anyway. If you read the Bible, you'll find out many things are coming true in prophecy and things have happened that were told that was going to happen. And look, they did. It's one of those things where it's like the living Bible. It, it, it's the word of God and it's true. It's, it's testimonies. It's so important. All right. Somebody read 41, 33 through 37 of Genesis. Now therefore let the king provide a wise and industrious man, and place him over the land of Egypt, so that he may appoint overseers throughout all the regions, and let a fifth part of the fruits throughout the seven fertile years that now have already begun to occur be gathered into storehouses, and let all the grain be stored away under the power of Pharaoh, and let it be kept in the cities." And let it be prepared for the future famine of seven years, which will oppress Egypt, and then the land will not be consumed by destitution. The council pleased Pharaoh and all his ministers. All right, so now you kind of look at this as we're seeing what's happening here. You kind of look at a difference between when you identify a problem and when you actually identify the solution. Mm hmm it's really important to kind of know that as you propose a plan, when you have any type of challenge, you kind of have to know what the value of that plan is going to be and what's going to go on and how it's going to come together. And I bring that together because if you're looking at how Pharaoh responds in Genesis 41, you're going to start to see a little more detail on basically how it would lead up to Joseph as a leader in Egypt. Mm -hmm. and everything that happened would come to that point so that it was a plan in motion. In fact, Joseph's plan provided a solution that was given, and trusting in God, even back in prison, he put himself in a position to actually be used by God. Steps were then already in motion that would be fulfilled by Joseph's dreams even as a teenager, they were already still moving forward. So you have more than a decade later that that's still going on. Mm -hmm. I'm bringing that up because guess what? Your problems mold you and make you. And as God's shaping us to be more like Christ, we got to take problems and look at them to solutions. But we got to do it in such a way that by giving it to God and trusting his plan, you start to see something happen with even your darkest hour and the worst problems. It see, as things happen, those very things that were problems become testimonies. And as those testimonies begin to happen, we start to realize and can share things that's happening in our own personal lives where the Lord's beginning to work with us and we are seeing his plan revealed. And you start to understand it a little better. And I don't know about you, but when you start having a testimony to share, that's what Truth Inspired is all about. You can see the other testimonies that are out there. That's what life's all about. When you're accepting God and you're being molded and shaped and put to the point where you're being formed and have trusted in him, that's where you need to be. And you can be there. We're going to say a prayer in just a minute. I want you to say it with us. It's important. Because, guys, when you share those testimonies, i got to say something. That's truly the truth inspired that's out there. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you want to see what truth inspired is all about, that would be it. And how do you get a testimony? You have to go through some kind of trial. And have you ever had a problem? Of course. On a regular basis, probably. Right. Instead of turning it into more problems or getting upset, what do we need to do? Turn it into a testimony. That's right. By giving it to God. If you can take your darkest moment or anything that feels like, oh no, and just say, Lord, I'm not sure what this is about, but I've given it to you and it's going to work. It. You're going to find something happen. It's going to find and turn into a way that's pleasant as long as you include God in that. Mm -hmm. It will come out with his plan and you will always come out on top instead of just falling down. I recently heard about how eagles fly real high. Mm -hmm. I want to bring that up because they have predators, even believe it or not, the little crow will chase them, okay? And they get really attacked. But I'm going to tell you something about this. 
what happens is that very eagle ends up going up high enough as that crow starts going up. When he gets so high, the crow faints. The eagle can continue to go high. Now, you know, the significance of that is what happens when you give it to God? You soar higher than any of your problems. He's going to be with you. I just thought that was a great example, and we needed to know how that was. And that's why I'm going to leave you with that thought, knowing that believers can point others to God when asked about past actions. There's your testimonies. Believers should pay attention to the way God reveals his plans because they're out there. You just need to open your eyes and look because if right. you don't, you're not going to find them. Don't be blindfolded like you are in those games. Instead, use God and don't let anything get in your way. Believers can demonstrate trust when responding to God's plans, no doubt, and you do that by your faith in God and as you grow closer to him. So, guys, make sure you're demonstrating your trust in him, revealing your plans to him as he reveals them to you. You'll see what happens Trust in him. You'll be unable to do anything right if you just, I mean, you're just going to mess up a lot of things. We always do, especially when we take it on on our own. But you give it to him and you let his will be done, just like the Lord's Prayer says. And you will definitely see things revealed and understand it and have a better understanding to why you may even went through some of the things you had to go through. Absolutely. It's just going to make you a stronger person and a better person especially if you're in Christ, because he's already there with you, walking through it, it all. it gives you a certain sense of peace, too, because you don't worry about it as much when you give it to God, and the worrying is not going to fix it. So, All right, so remember go. I said I wanted you to pray with me one more yes. time? I'm throwing that in there because as we pray right now, just say the words with me. You can accept God right now if you haven't already. Just pray with me. Father in heaven, we come to you trusting and knowing that Jesus, you died on that cross. You're alive and you're well. You died for us. You took our sins. We believe in you, Jesus. Lord, we come to you in Jesus' name, believing because you tell us to believe in the Son. Jesus, believing in you, we can come to the Father and we ask him right now by coming to you, God, in Jesus' name, that you give us the guidance that we need. I'm asking you, God, to give us the guidance that we need. Guard our hearts and every one of these adults that are with here. Teach them how they can faithfully seek and obey your plan for them. Lord, bless us. Help us. Give us strength, energy, and guidance. And it's in Jesus' name we pray this always because that's truth-inspired. Thank you, Jesus, for everything. Be with us always. Amen. Amen.